Okay, this is uh, sections 2, 1, and 2, 2 in our textbook. So we're getting into chapter 2 here, and we're going to be graphing functions and relations. We only have a couple more lessons in this whole chapter. Um, so we're going to be coming back to the idea of graphing with a table. So here we've got um, a new function here. We're going to graph this without a calculator. We're going to be able to state the domain and the range. And uh, one of the basic ideas, the general ideas that I want you to be able to understand is that anytime you don't know what a function looks like, just plug in into a table some x and y values. So this time, when you plug in x and y values, if you try negative 2 to 2, your standard um, table values here, we can't plug in negative 2 in for the absolute value of x because you're going to end up with a negative number. So that's not really a smart value to pick here, right? If I pick negative 4, the same thing is going to happen. If I pick negative 8, the same thing is going to happen. So right away, I notice that I can't actually pick any of my negative values. So what I'm going to do here is start at 0. And if I pick 1, that's easy to, to graph, right? If I take the square root of 1, I still get 1. But the square root of 2, if I plug in 2, isn't so easy to graph. So I actually don't want to pick those values like that. So right away, I'm going to start at 0. And I'm going to pick a number like 1. I'm going to also pick 4, because I know that the square root of 4 is 2, OK? So if you look at your right-hand column here, notice I'm getting integer values, 0, 1, 2. The next one would be 3, right, and then 4. So think of it backwards. What could you plug in for the x in order to get the square root to be 3? Well, that number would be 9. So the square root that, um, so think of a number that would give you 4 if you took the square root of that, and that would give you 16. So that's kind of how you're going to think a little bit backwards um, to figure out a table for a square root function. So if I plot 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, and then 16, 4. 16, 4 is going to be off the graph a little bit, but let's just approximate it here at 16, 4. This function looks like this. So this is your mother function for a square root graph. We kind of already have a hint um, about what the domain is going to be. Remember, we could not plug in any negative numbers, right? So our domain here is going to be all values that are greater than or equal to 0. So x should be greater than or equal to 0. For our range, Notice that we're also, we have a low point here at 0, and it keeps going forever into positive infinity, so we have y is greater than or equal to 0 as well. Okay, now in graph number 2, we can use this idea of transformations here, or we can create another table of values. So if I create a table of values here, um, I want to pick again smart values. If you plug in our positive values that we had before, like 0, through 4. Let's say we try that. If I plug in 0 here, I get the absolute value, or sorry, the square root of negative 4. I can't use 0. If I try 1, I get the square root of negative 3. Can't use that one either. If I try 2, same thing. If I try 3, the same thing. The first number that you're going to be able to use is the number 4. If I take the absolute value of, sorry, the square root of 4 minus 4, I get the square root of 0, which gives me 0. So it's very similar to our absolute value function where you're going to try to make the inside of this radical equal to 0. That's going to be your starting point, and then from there you're going to pick more values. So if I increase in value, if I pick the number 5, I get 5 minus 4, which equals 1. So the square root of 1 is just 1. Now if I try 6, this is not going to give me such an easy integer to use, because the square root of 6 minus 4 is the square root of 2. So I don't want to try to graph that. So this time, when you're picking values, what you're going to do, again, is you're going to start with your y. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are integers that I can graph. So what I'm going to do is think backwards. How can I get the inside of this radical here to equal 2 if I took the square root? Well, what you're going to do now is set x minus 4, the square root, equal to 2. So this is kind of backwards logic that you're going to use. If I square both sides here, I get the number 4 on the right hand side, and the radical drops away, leaving me with just x minus 4. If I add, I end up with 8. So 8 is the next number I could plug in in order to get um, an integer for the y value. Okay? So that's kind of what you're thinking about as you go through this. So let's try 3. Well, if I want the square root of a number to equal 3, then that means that the inside of that number, right, inside that radical, had to equal 9. In other words, x minus 4 would have to equal the square root of 9, right? The square root of x minus 4 would have to equal the square root of 9. So I'm going to set x minus 4 equal to 9, and I get 13. Let's try that now for 4. If I want 
to get the square root of something to equal 4, then that means I had to start with radical 16. So I'm going to set radical 16 equal to radical x minus 4. In other words, x minus 4, the inside, needs to equal 16. So that number would give me 20. So these are the plotted points that I could pick. 4, 0, 5, 1, then 8, 2, 13, 3, and then 24 is obviously way off. I'm just going to kind of place it there, even though it's not quite there. But um, this is your, your same graph now, just translated four units. So if you look at this, this is we can apply our transformations. When it's on the inside of the radical like this, it's going to shift it, our mother function, to the right. And it shifted it four units. If you look, every point is still kind of similar to what we had before. So let's look back at the mother function. If I compare this first point here, I went to the right one and up one, right? So down here, I'm going to the right one and up one. If I look back here now at the second point, I go to the right one, two, three, four, and up one, two. So let's look at here, based off of where our, um, you know, our starting point is, our initial point here, I go to the right one, two, three, four, and up one, two. So if you can remember the general table, your x, y values, you have you know, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. So those are how I'm getting my x and y um, numbers, right? I move 4 units to the right, which is the x direction, and then I move 2 units up, which is the y direction. So the next point should have been 9 and then 3, so I move 9 units to the right and 3 up. So if I do that, 9, you know, 9 units to the right, I end up at 13, and then 3 up from here ends up being 3. Remember, that is the point that we had, 13, 3. So there is a shortcut for graphing these as well. But if you don't understand the shortcut, then just make your table here, making sure that you're picking you know, y values that make sense. Make sure that you get integer values to graph instead of you know, square root of 22, OK? OK, sorry, I forgot the domain and range here. It's getting a little bit messy, but the domain here, now, remember, it's not just all numbers that are greater than or equal to 0, not like before, like we had in that last example, because we can't use you know, numbers that fall between 0 and 4. What we start at was x is equal to 4 and higher. So if x is greater than or equal to 4, this is within our domain. Our range still has a low point here at 0, and it goes on for positive, you know, forever to positive infinity, so it's y is greater than or equal to 0. All right, this next example says to plot the function of root x plus 2. So again, I could make tables for all of these values, and I can pick numbers like um, 0, 1, 4, because those are easy to plug in for x and get a y output that's an integer. <coughs> Sorry about that. My dogs are fighting right now over a toy. Shut up. OK, so anyway, if we want to state, um, or sorry, I was I think I was doing reflections, translation. Yeah, let's do a translation instead of a table. So using that same idea that we had before when we had an absolute value or when we had just a normal function, this number on the outside affects your y values, right? So if we started with our normal table um, for the x and for the y, it's a square root function. So if I plug in 0, I should get 0. If I plug in 1, I get 1. If I plug in 4, I get 2. 9, I get 3, right? These are the, the standard table um, when you have, you know, a uh, uh, mother function. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, since this plus 2 is on the outside of that radical, I know that this changes the y by adding 2 to every y value. So I change the y here by adding 2 to every single y value. Oops, 2 plus 2 is not 5. Okay, and then I can plot those points. Now, alternatively, you could also say, okay, this is what my general function looks like, right? 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and uh, 9, 3. So these are some points on that absolute value, or the square root graph. Well, if I just shift them all up 2, then I end up here. Oops. So I go up and up, and this is my function, okay? So I just am showing you basically a couple different ways to graph the exact same thing. Um, and again, if you look at these points here, they'll match up to this x coordinate with this y, this x with this y, this x with this y, and this x with this y. Okay? All right. Oh, let's, sorry, forgot the domain and the range. Okay, for the domain and the range here, we have, if you look, you can just do it visually even too. You are not plotting it, plugging in any points on this side of the y axis. So 
your first value is at zero, so x is greater than or equal to zero. So your domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. Your y value, this time everything's been shifted up two units. Your, your low point now is at two. So for our range, we have y is greater than or equal to two. All right, now on the back side here, it's a little bit different. These are not um, functions. These are actually called relations, and we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But um, this time I am going to use an xy table. Okay, so I create an xy table. And this is where I really do it backwards. Instead of picking my x values, I only pick y values and then use um, that xy pair afterwards. So I'm going to plug in our normal negative 2 to 2 here. And then I plug in for the y value and I get an x output. So if I plug in negative 2, the absolute value of that gives me 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0 and 1, 2 again. Okay, so if I plot this, I have a graph that will look like this. So this is your v-shape, it's just been now kind of reflected. So when x equals the absolute value of y, it is very, very similar to your mother function where y equals x, y equals the absolute value of x, but now it's just, you can see it's kind of translated by reflecting twice, once over the x-axis and once over the y-axis. Okay, so now let's talk about domain and range. The domain here, none of these x values here are used, right? None of these x values are used. So x is greater than or equal to 0. Your range this time is all real numbers. It's actually the exact opposite of when you do y equals the absolute value of x. Okay, so your range, x is greater than or equal to 0 or sorry, your domain x is greater than or equal to zero because you're not using any of these values. And your range, since this goes to positive infinity and negative infinity, will be all real numbers. All right, now, if we are just restricting this to positive reals, so think about positive reals for your, uh, your x vari variable. Well, positive reals would mean that I'm using all of the same exact numbers for my domain, right? These are all, if you look at this, positive reals, except for the fact that 0 will now have an open circle because 0 is not positive. Okay, So since uh, 0 is not in included in, in the domain here, um, my range kind of looks the exact same. The, uh, the range is going to be all real numbers, except, remember that this, this point here is an open circle, so y cannot equal zero okay all real numbers except y cannot equal zero all right let's go to the next example x equals y squared minus one so what i'm going to do is start again with my xy table and i'm going to pick values to plug in for the y so i'm going to do my standard negative two to two and i'm going to start plugging in for the y so if i square y then i subtract one so negative two squared minus one is the operation that i'm going to be doing Let's write it out right here. That's what I'm actually doing. I'm plugging in negative 2 right into here. And I end up with 3, right? Positive 4 minus 1 is 3. If I plug in negative 1 and I square that, I get a positive 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 squared minus 1 is still just negative 1. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. And 2 squared minus 1 gives me 3. So I'm plotting the points 3, negative 2. 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 3, 2. So here we're still getting a parabola shape if you connect these, right? We're still getting our U shape, just like we would get if we had Y equals X squared. This has been translated, though, a couple different ways, right? This has been reflected over the X and the Y axis, and now it's been shifted left 1. So this is a little bit different than what we've seen with you know, a parabola if we looked at the translations there. So this is um, your function here. Or I'm sorry, it's actually a relation here. But the domain of this um, relation is all values of x. So we're not using anything back here, right? None of this appears in our graph. So all values of x that are equal to or greater than negative 1. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And our range, since this goes to positive infinity and down to negative infinity, is going to be all reals. Now, if we do non-positive reals, let's think about, excuse me, non-positive reals. 
means all numbers that are negative, including zero, right? So if I take my graph here and I cross out all positive reals, this time I don't want any of these x values, right? These are all represented by positive. I only want this portion here of that graph. So negative one, and then on, t on zero, I'm gonna have an open circle. Oh, sorry, it's a closed circle because it is non-positive because it includes, it includes uh, zero. But this is what that graph would look like. It's only including the negative numbers as well as zero. So my range here, you do have a low point. Your low point is at negative one. Your high point is at positive one. So the range is negative one, is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to one. All right, the last two graphs here. Um, this is also going to look like a parabola. This is going to have a shift of its own, too, just like before. But um, let's make a table. So let's pick values to plug in for the y coordinate. Let's do negative 2 to 2 again. We're going to square negative 2. Or sorry, <laughs> we're going to do order of operations first. We're going to take negative 2 minus 1 and then square it. So we get negative 3 squared which ends up being 9. If we plug in negative 1 here, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Square that, and you get 4. Uh, the next one, negative 1 squared gives me a positive 1. 0 squared still gives me 0. And 2 squared, 2 minus 1, 1 squared becomes 1. Now, if you look at your points here, do you see how these are going to start to bounce back up? So like if I had picked the next point here and plugged in 3, now I'm going to get more of my U shape because I'm seeing kind of a mirroring effect. Like I'm repeating 1, then 0, oh, and then it comes back to 1. So I'm guessing that this next number that I plug in should be a 4 here. And I can verify that if I plug in 3, 3 minus 1 squared gives me 4, right? So I knew that it would be a 4 because I'm looking here at that reflection. So the next point would probably be 9, and that y coordinate would be 4. So you can kind of skip through values too once you kind of recognize the pattern that occurs. Okay, so if I plot this, uh, negative 9, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and, uh, oh shoot, sorry, they're not negative, I just made those slashes there, I was wondering why my parabola made no sense. Sorry about that. Okay, so it should be 9, neg uh, nine negative 2, 4, negative 1. Okay, that makes more sense. And then the last points, uh, 4, 3, and 9, 4. Okay, so I get a parabola now that's been turned on its side. For the domain of this, we're only looking at none of these values, right? None of those um, negative values. We're starting at zero and working our way to the positive infinity. So it's x is greater than or equal to zero. Our range, since this goes to positive, since this goes to positive infinity and negative infinity, is going to be all real numbers. Okay. And then if we look at a domain of only non-positive reals, meaning negative as well as zero, we actually only get one point. The only point in our range here is this value here at 0, 1. Because I can't use any negative numbers, or sorry, any positive numbers, which means that this whole table that I used here, right, all these positive values, I can't use those anymore. All of this part of the graph, I cannot use anymore. So I only end up with a single point, and it's not really in the range at all. This is the empty set, because it's an open circle. Our range here is the empty set, kind of unique there. All right. This is the end of the well, second to last lesson of the chapter.